Unit one is missing. Check, check, check. Mike, check. Unit two is missing. Check, check. Unit three is missing. And that one's got Mox Fuel. You know, there was a comment there last night um, when we were talking about uh, the starfish, uh, Christine uh, Radchick. You'll find a link below and in the comment section again tonight for many nights now that this lady is showing up here. And with another brilliant comment about starfish use salt water as blood. It's truly the canary in the coal mine for us. And when you see starfish, you know, I was just thinking about it. They were showing the pictures, uh, I think it was CBS a couple of days ago, about starfish all the way along the coastline. And I thought there was something odd about that. And it wasn't until I read Christine's comment, a rad chick's comment, that it struck me. And so I went back and looked at the video, and I don't see... I don't see the little starfish that used to get out of the way of the big starfish. Because that was another thing I used to always see on the ocean floor, was how all the starfish, the little tiny, the skinny starfish, I can't remember the names of them, but they, they actually coat the ocean floor. And so they'll get out of the way of all the other creatures, the snails, the sea cucumbers, uh, the crabs and everything else. They actually, they're always moving, it seems like. That part of the ocean floor, in between all the creatures and the habitat itself is alive. It's alive. The very floor of the ocean is alive with starfish, these little skinny starfish. And there's many different types of starfish, and the sea urchins, and the prawns and that, like, and the shrimp live in the sea urchins' spine, spines. And they dart amongst the sea urchins. And sea urchins will cover the ocean floor like uh, football fields. And every time there's a little tiny gap anywhere, it's full of these little small starfish. And I don't see them. It's because the big ones are so obvious, right? And it's, it was just that comment that Christine left. And tonight she has left another comment. I went over and read the article. I've been on that site all day, but I didn't refresh that page lately. And... Uh, they're expecting it to come out of Fukushima, uh, strontium-90. And that, that equipment's not going to be much good anyway, for no matter what's there. But the strontium-90, for the next 50,000 days, that's like kind of a puzzling thing. So they're emitting now all of a sudden. So in case, I guess people are looking or have found it or something. So they come out with a story saying that it's going to start showing up. And that's the emblematic uh, the cores disappearing. Uh, whew, you know, it's just... Uh, we don't need them to emit anything anymore. We really truly don't. The ocean is broken. That article alone tells you so much. And then the congregations of marine life tells you just so much. If uh, Because that's what you're expecting. You're expecting the migratory animals to get cut off by the plumes and then start congregating on the coastline because they're forced in there and because they have an instinct to migrate and that instinct is to go around any obstacles they come across along the way and because they travel great distances that we can't even imagine well I can I remember you know uh, way back way back on the ocean and for four days every year, the sky would go black with birds. And the birds would land all over your deck and land on the cabin of the boat. Uh, they would try to pull the fish off the gear as you're pulling. Little little tiny birds trying to grab a 40-pound fish and tug it back into the ocean. I kid you not. And, and we used to use, you know, when I was 13, I stood on the back of a boat on the North Atlantic every day. And I threw hooks by hand. Every six feet, there was a hook. And you're on an average 30-foot ground swell, and you had around eight tubs at least a day with 400 hooks in it, and every hook is six feet apart. And then it sounded like a 19-inch. And I used that because that's generally how long it was, and then you would tie it on so it would get a bit shorter. But every hook was about 19 inches off the ground line. You would stand on the back of the boat, and you would throw eight or 12 hooks over the back of the boat since I was 13. And that's probably the, the scariest job you can imagine. I got black eyes. Because on the end of the hook is a big piece of frozen bait. It was fresh bait you caught yourself. And then you put it in a freezer overnight and it froze. And so that would hit you in the face. That would tear the hat off your heads. That would tear gloves off your hands. 
It would tear your jackets open. And it would tear your hands apart. And it would tear the boat apart. And the sky would fill up with birds. And then, you know, as the years went by, that stopped happening because of the migratory, the international fleets uh, would come in with what, what's known as drift net. It was banned in 1996. I just want to need to give you some kind of a context that I think is important. And so the drift net industry would set out 80 miles of trawl of a monofill that had epoxy. So you know how a typical net is. Well, the international fleets were using these nets that were then dipped in epoxy. So it's like a big pen where it would live, it, it could last for 900,000 years. And so they would put 80 miles of that out on the ocean for the surface, but it would go very deep, like say 300 feet deep. And so it was indiscriminate. Plus, uh, they would lose it. And so that would drift around forever. And there's tens of thousands of miles of that drifting around in both oceans. And they can actually cut off the entire coastline and have. And that kind of got rid of the birds because it caught the migratory animals coming through and that the birds were chasing. And I kid you not, the skies were black for three, four, and five days at a time each year from the birds. And I used to have to slow the boat down every day for whales because uh, I was always afraid, because I was young and naive, even though I grew up in that life, I was still naive enough to think that I could hit the whale with the boat, I wouldn't get ashore, uh, because I got seasick every day. In fact, I used to judge the weather by how quick I got seasick going out to harbor. And that's logged in uh, Fisheries and Oceans log books. Dad logged it in every day. Dana's sick, so as we get uh, halfway out to harbor, it's going to be a pretty rough day. And people would call up on the... Uh, CB radio, we never had VHF back in them days. We call us on the CB radio and how was Dana doing <laughs> as you were going out to Harvard? <laughs> but Dad, uh, Dad wouldn't, he didn't care what the weather done. We went to the middle of the harbor. Didn't matter if there was whirlpools right in our harbor. And there's no cars there. There's 170 people still living there, blah, blah, blah. And I know I went down that road. And because... Uh, we're, we're, I'm seeing all those species so, showing up on the coastline all over the place. And uh, by the way, I mentioned that article last night. I'm going to come over to the comment section here very quick. But I, 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 I was talking last night about an article where there's 5 million birds in New Zealand. And that was the population over the last, uh, not a long period, right? And so that's considered quite the abnormality where... Uh, such a, a massive amount of them have died in such a short period of time, 5 million birds, and they just keep finding massive amounts dying on uh, different, parts of, different parts of the coastline. And I just thought it was important I mentioned that, just like uh, Radchick was talking about last night, and I missed that comment, and how important that really truly is, that starfish use the salt water as their blood. So, you know... You can't get any more intimate with the ecosystem than that, obviously. Um, and now that I think about it, you know, when I dove, uh, say, off Prince Rupert, British Columbia, I, I took a bunch of friends out um, just for a couple of days on the boat. And I wanted to, uh, you know, I figured five or ten miles outside of Prince Rupert because there's these big uh, ship, uh, for the container ships to come over and fill up the train tracks across Canada go all the way up to Prince Rupert. And then they offload at the big facility, and the big boats will go in there, tie up, and they'll pump all that stuff aboard of, like all the grain and wood chips and stuff like that aboard these massive container ships. And so all that sediment that went into the ocean, there was a lot of pollution because of all of these ships and their ballast and everything else. And um, so every five kilometers outside of Rupert, uh, we were headed down to uh, Hot Springs, uh, just past Eddie Pass, which was six hours away from Prince Rupert by boat. Summer's day, anyway. And so I decided I was going to dive. I'll finish the story. I decided I was going to go diving and uh, get uh, scallops and box crab. And the box crab is, I don't even need one, because one is enough for about uh, 10 people. There's great big things. You can't you can't fit their shell in a five-gallon bucket. Um, and so I was going to get one of them, and I was going to get a whole bunch of scallops. Shouldn't take me no more than 30 minutes and have more than enough and there's never enough when it comes to me eating seafood because I'll eat it on the ocean floor but to finish the story was I didn't find nothing and I didn't find even starfish 
And that was the first thing I remember I noticed was there was no starfish. And so I was like, I was wasting my time. So I would come up, jump aboard the boat and steam along the coastline and, and jump in another spot. And then as soon as I didn't see the starfish, I didn't even bother looking because I understand the starfish. Because I lived in that environment every day for 14 years, six hours a day on the ocean floor. And when I looked at those, that video, I didn't see those little starfish. And I sat here last night and even this morning and I stared at every piece of uh, footage when they had the cameras underwater and I didn't see it. And so that's something I got to go look at now because that should be there, see? Okay, so let's go over to the comments section. And see what I missed. I don't know, no one knows what I missed. Nobody knows. Let me get rid of that one. And there's a lot going on that I could cover today. But let's cover a couple of comments for sure. See who's see who's saying hi. What have I done? Hang on. Oh yeah, you know, uh They gag a guy, um They gagged a guy in the Japanese parliament. And he stuck, they stuck a rag in his mouth. Four guards grabbed him, took him away. Hi, Miss Milky. I wave slow so you can see all of my wave. <laughs> I'm doing it really slow so you can catch it all. Hi, Loner. Hi, Red Chick. What's up? I always wanted to do that to you. So uh, We got uh, Make is looking. Third watch. Albert. Uh, pop, 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 camshaft. I got very few comments in break right there. That might take a second. Let's come over to this. Let's come over to this screen here, just in case. Maybe I can catch up on the comments on this one. First off, let me change this picture because we're talking about also. Um, today I put up a video a short video and linked it to the other video that's on my site about how uh, the uranium-238 that the military uses, which is the yellow cake left over from the processing. And uh, there's one important thing about that, that when you extract uh, the enriched uranium and you're left with the 238, you change the properties of the, the alphas, the gammas, and the betas in a, in a real... Uh, at the time, I guess, uh, from what I gathered, was it was a, no one expected it to change dramatically like that and become so hideous. And so that's another thing that I keep forgetting out of the equation, is how hideous it actually truly is because... Uh, not just because they weaponize it, but because they does, they does these other things to it, and hence the MOX fuel, which has nothing to do with power. So, you know, uh, Fukushima's Diachi nuclear plant, what they call a power, power plant, that, that's, a, that's an outright, outrageous lie again. It's not a power plant. It's, it, that's just the byproduct, see? And the proof is in Unit 3, which is MOX fuel. And if you looked it up on the Internet, you'll find it everywhere. So I'll come over to the comments on this computer because I just flipped and just before I go off into a rent. Um, not going to play funny. In. Here we go. I'm going to try to refresh this page. See if that helps. I'll come back over to that one after. Hi, Nuts for Art. Hi, Cold T997. Hi, Lunar. Lee John. Hi, Bubba. Yeah, seasickness is horrible. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Kurt K. 50,000 50, days is 2,083 80, years. I'll take your word for it. I should have done the math myself. I should have done that math myself. Uh, I read the article and I still got it up there. I'll just jump on it in a moment here. Hi, Dunce, D-U-A-N-C, or Campbell. I can't pronounce names, so if I screw anybody's names up. Uh, just passing through, query four. Hi, hi, Europrop. What's up? 
Bill Reed, Ketzer K, Lorena Rail. See, I almost got it that time. You're getting better. Oh, somebody gave me a thumbs down. That's cool. <laughs> You're a proper hater. Hi, Magic. Hi, Janet. Hi, Miss Frill. Made it. I see. Good stuff. Hi, Lori. Just go say hi to everybody before it goes on this rent, this tour rent. We are just getting started. Yeah. Hi, Nora. Pro um, Nuber Magic. And I was trying to cover last night, and it got clipped out of my video somehow. That's your article. That the video you put out yesterday, how they stuffed rags in this protester's mouth and dragged them off the floor. Imagine! That's insane! What kind of society is that? Oh, only in a democracy. Democracy is where 51% of the people can vote to have the other 49% killed, basically. That's what they do all the time. They willingly enslave each other. At, oh, let's get them back. We'll vote and take away their rights. And, oh, let's get them back. We'll vote and take away their rights. I'm not going to go down that path tonight, though. Um, 137 years, Bubba? 365 days in a year, divided by 50,000. And I got to get out my calculator and do it myself. Well, that's what I'll do. Cause let's put an end to that one right quick here. Systems tools. Calculator. Dum, 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 dum. I screwed that up. Calculator. Hello, beeper. 50. Big ones. One tool tray. Divided by 364 and 9 tenths is 136 years. See, you were right. How'd you get 137? I'll meet you out in the parking lot. Let's fight about it, huh? <laughs> okay, sir, stuff, though. Ranting over to 136.9. <laughs> Good call, Bubba. <coughs> let me run down. Let me run down. Hang on. I know I missed a whole bunch. So let me run all the way to the bottom. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Cucumber. Hi, Red Chick. Hi, AV8. Nav8. And see, they don't mention that's their way of introducing strontium, I guess, more heavily into the conversation is by bringing up that article and trying to now... That's how they do it, right? They come out in increments, like CBC said, something strange is going on in the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> Gee, you don't suppose there is? <laughs> Talk about an understatement of a lifetime. Something odd. No, it's not something odd. It's Fukushima. Insane in a, insanity is... You know, might as well come out and say it like it is. It's a meteorite coming at us. We best get our asses in gear or stick them between our legs, one or the other. Our heads. Yeah, the democracy is two wolves and a sheep deciding what's for dinner. And in the Republic, the sheep would have a gun. 12 gauge or something, see? And so that's where everybody has rights, equal rights. Um... Because I, I, I heard that joke and then I heard the punchline, another punchline one time added to it. So that's where I came up with that one. I can't remember who said that now, but. Rent and go. Okay, here we go. i got to wind me up like a little music box. It's done, see? Uh, or just call me Dave. What's up, Dave? Rent away. Okay, haters, boo, hiss. We like haters. Haters are good. They get me running. Jan, which is Miss Milky's uh, site, because she has problems with it sometimes. Hi, Miss Milky. I mean, Jan. I mean, Miss Milky. Aha. Hi, David. Uh, we're getting tight now. 50,000 days divided by 365 is 136.99. See what you've done, Mad Chick? See what you got done now? You got everybody scrapping in the comment section, which is pretty bloody awesome, if you ask me. Okay, here we go. 
<laughs> Better fill up the lungs. Actually, fill up your lungs from your three different ways. Your shoulders, your chest, and your solar plexus. Eh, who wants to bother with that stuff? It's better to wheeze and breeze your way through it. It's actually 136.986. Okay, 99, nine, you're right. Well, there you go. You got the last one, didn't you? <clears throat> okay. Let's go get some serious stuff here for a few minutes. Hi, Zoe. Hi, honey. How are you? You go sniff, sniff. You smell the old cougars. Okay. Um, study finds joint strontium-90 released into the body of water began around a thousand days after meltdown. That'll be uh, uh, an interesting... Uh, do we really care about strontium-90 anyway? When you look at how much plutonium was there, who, who cares about the uranium? Who cares about the cesium? Who cares about the strontium? When that plutonium, 2.2 pounds of it, will kill most of the mammals on the planet, not to mention the humans. And that these concoctions, though, in Unit 3, which is mostly plutonium and a little bit of uranium, and who knows what else they put in there. You know, they put a little bit of everything in that one, didn't they? How did they get it uh, two million times worse than any other reactor on the planet? And why would you do that on this planet anyway? Why would you conceive that that was acceptable? And the people that are talking about it are the lobbyists. Newer Magic got a new number, 365.4. Oh, I see what you're doing. That's pretty cute, man. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Ricky. There you go. So let me let me let me explain something. Uh, how this works? Just one day is hell on earth. Just one day of you know one is hell on this earth. And I think Unit you know, 1, we call it nine Chernobyls because Chernobyl was a 30% meltdown. It's one-third the size of uh, Fukushima's reactors, which are much bigger. And Unit you know, 4 is much bigger again. And so that would make... Um, now, we don't know how many rods. I can't remember how many rods and the types. It's different types of rods. Uh, there was graphite in Chernobyl, so that's totally different than what they'd done at Fukushima. Um... So now you're talking at least nine times minimum anyway, even if it was the same kind of fuel, it would still be nine times worse than Chernobyl where a million people, where a million people paid a horrible price, where there was uh, 12 people a hundred times a day, 12 different people ran out on the roof of Chernobyl for 15 to 20 seconds and got a deadly dose, running on 8,000 and 12,000 Rankins. That's got to be the most terrifying thing imaginable. But yet, these people, a lot of them didn't know what they were doing. A lot of them did. A lot of them tried to give away their dosimeters, which are only going to read, you know, uh, uh, between 15 and 20 Rankins. So if you were stepping on that other stuff any higher than that, there was everywhere. You wouldn't even be able to read it, see? It was just something to make you feel that you had a little kind of protection or something like that. Or, but I don't think anybody knew anybody had that illusion after the first day, after the carnage from that first day in Chernobyl. And so imagine that you're the guy who got to tell 12 people to run out on a roof, and you got 15 or 20, sec 20 seconds to do your business, and then you can go home. And so 15 or 20 seconds, that's not very long, is it? It's the longest 15 or 20 seconds of your life, something you will relive every day of your life. If the people in Fukushima don't get those types of 15 or 20 seconds. See? Right? There's no one there saying, okay, you got your dose, time to go home. Because what they're doing there is they're only measuring cesium, or they're only measuring little these certain little tiny isotopes, and the whole site is 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 um, no man's land anyway, no human's land, I should say. Humans shouldn't be there. 
They shouldn't even be in Japan. Japan is a nuclear waste site, period. The entire country now is a nuclear waste site. The entire country should be dug up and put on a nuclear waste site. And Abe, um, there's a picture of him with one of the Yakuza's uh, money men that showed up during the article I seen today from about five years ago or something. But the, he's gone to the point now where the media can't question them. You know, that's literally where the media is sitting right now in uh, Japan. And where the average citizen cannot do what we're doing. They can't voice their opinion now. Because these creatures are watching like sharks. I mean, the people at the parliament a few days ago, Nubur Magic's video where he's talking, his most recent one, um, I got a screen capture of your tattoo, by the way. That might be my screen capture for my video tomorrow night. Magic. That's a good one. And uh, I'm just trying to get a really clean screen capture. But um, those people in the parliament who stuffed a rag in a man's mouth and then dragged him away that nobody knows what happened to that man. Well, by silencing that man, those people who done that, they're murderers. They should have grabbed the person who said silence that man and drag and put a rag in that person's mouth and dragged them away and then dropped the key down a, a sidewalk drain after work and bricked off that cell, literally. Somebody that will take away the rights of everybody so and they're making money, you see? That's the only reason you would do something like that. The only reason you would conceivably take away the freedom of somebody is because you made money doing it. It doesn't have to be... Uh, and then you can make laws and say it's legal. Do you got any idea? I guess you do, but I mean, this is how it works. They make laws up. And most of this, like all, the reason that we're in so much trouble is because of nuclear lobbyists. Is nuclear, nuclear lobbyists. And your Bill of Rights, your Constitutions, and your Magna Carta says you're allowed to hang them in the streets if you go look it up. They never redacted that, I don't think. Even though they gave them human rights, you can still argue, oh no, you know, the Bill of Rights, Constitutions, Magna Carta, all say we can hang these creatures. Can't punish me. It's a legal crime. It's a purge. <laughs> That's coming. They're going to purge all the, all the nuclear lobbyists off this planet in the near future. When this breaks, when people find out the entire Pacific Ocean is dead, it's dead now. Wait till you get another supercell storm coming at you. On this side. Ah, oh, it happened to the Filipinos. No big deal. Right? Ignore that. <laughs> the reality of it is, that's a re direct result of a radiated ocean. 195 mile an hour winds that are not winds anymore, they're projectiles. It's a concoction of just projectiles, really. Because even something small at that speed, at 195 miles an hour, hitting the human body is brutal. But like a brick. At 195 miles an hour, it's going to go right on through your house, probably. That's some serious force, right? And that shouldn't exist on this planet in that context where there's 100 miles wide, oi, of that sustained wind with gust of 235 miles an hour on Earth. That's an F4 tornado, 100 miles wide. is a direct result. See? And the media all just focus in on a few victims and... Straight got away from that one. That's common. So you can't hide from that one anymore. You can't hide from all these whales and porpoise and all these fish. Those sardines were supposed to come down here. The British Columbia. They couldn't get around the plume. So the plume is here, see? And the plume that we're really worried about is really thick. It's almost a thousand days of massive hemorrhaging from three melted reactors. And from what they we gather is those buildings and the shape those buildings are in means d the cores had to go all the way down and they're covered by water. Because otherwise those buildings would have would have just turned in on themselves and because you can see how they have done that, but the cores kept going down. And these fables of it takes uh two uh two an hour and every uh 
Their containment underneath its cement, this is the story they want you to believe, is that 9,000 degree Fahrenheit uh, won't melt through that more than two um, inches an hour. See how ludicrous those statements are, right? Because rocks will melt at 2,000 degree Fahrenheit. So what, you know, 9,000 degree Fahrenheit will melt everything as quick as you can throw it at it. As quick as you can throw it at it. That's the sun. That's a star on our planet, see? And there's three of them down there. But one of them in particular is ferocious. And it's known as Unit 3. And Unit 3... Unit 3 is two million times worse than any other reactor on the planet. And so normally these cores all had a million gallons a minute. There's 1,440 minutes in a day, and that's 4.2 billion gallons a day or so that are running over the cores. But then you have the mountain behind it and the natural river that ran underneath it, and they put the, the topsoil on top of that 100 feet deep, and then they built these facilities on that. Excuse me. And so this river that naturally runs underneath it is on purpose to flush out. Right? All your stuff is meant to go down through that topsoil. The topsoil soaks up the water, and that, that keeps allows you to get back on the site in an accident. Otherwise, you can't get back on that site. If that was all dry ground around there, you wouldn't be on that site. It would turn into a big sinkhole, and because of 9,000 degree Fahrenheit times 3, that's insane. And then it had... Uh, atomized all the pools that were on the roof. I'm going to come back up to the comment section here in a second. But that's what it's got done in the ocean. And just for get rid of that picture, that's a two-week dispersal model. Not diluted model, but a two-week dispersal model. I should say that. That's a two-week diluted model. That's what the two-week diluted model looks like. Because that's what diluted means when you bring it in this context. And that's actually a word you shouldn't even use is dispersal. Because no matter if the atom, if the, the the isotopes and the radiation is here, it's there, it's over here, and it's over here, it'll kill you just as quick. It's got nothing to do with background radiation of water. It's got nothing to do with background radiation of airplanes. It's got nothing to do with bananas. It's got nothing to do with any kind of background, per se, radiation, low-level radioactive materials that are indigenous to the planet Earth. And that's what your Geiger counters are for, to pick up this... Very, very low, very low radiation. If you ingest the radiation, you can't even pick it up. It sequesters in your body. And uh, you can't get a Geiger counter or a reader to read it if it's in your body. It's too late. It's too late, see? And because there's... Uh, each one of these bundles got 60 rods that are 12 feet long. And, and as they go down and land on those... Because uh, there's many, many, many... I mean, the pool they're trying to clean out that they allege that it still exists is Building 4, which uh, the pictures are showing are an outright, outrageous lie. That can't be Building 4. No one can get in there. It got slammed and had the pool caught on fire twice, but it was slammed with uh, 16 foot, 1500 pound bundles, 12 foot bundles rather, with 60 rods in it that are all pellets of uranium plutonium from Building 3 and Building 2 and Building 1 that were in the pools above it. Because no one ever brings that into the equations in the medias. Now, forget about that. Pools don't matter. Of course they matter. Because a lot of that went and is still on the edges. And because they built these sarcophagus around the damaged buildings, that don't mean they got in there with... Let me bring up a picture because that's what I meant to do. Hang on. And then I'll come back over to the comment. Let me bring up a couple of doozies. Right, so they're gonna test the buildings that they're building around that. Right, you can never get into that building once you built it. See, but there's the fable that they're gonna keep alive. See how pretty that looks in that sweet? You like that? Yeah, look at that. It's got trees and some street lights and they mow the lawn. Poor buggers, man, I gotta go in there and mow that lawn. Eh? Can you imagine that? Just for the PR firms to say, oh, they're sitting in their office. Oh, we need that mowed lawn before we take that picture. Freaking murderers. The PR firms, the nuclear PR firms. Because all you can do is build a pretty building around it, but you can't actually physically go in there for another 100 years if it was just Chernobyl. They don't know for sure, but they're hoping in 100 years after Chernobyl they can get inside of it because the radiation will drop by 10. 
that was only a 30% meltdown. It had nothing to do with Mox Fuel or all the other fuels, fuels that are in that building, right? Yeah. How the hell are you going to get into that? There's rods everywhere. A rod this big will kill me before I can finish that sentence. Pop! All over. And then anybody comes in and tries to get to see what's wrong with me, they die too, just as quick. And there'll be a long string of bodies out to the road there. And nobody can get those bodies. Those bodies got to go on a nuclear waste site. There's bodies all over Fukushima they can't get at because these, when these buildings blew their top like a firecracker, they threw rods everywhere all over that site. And so the topsoil that they brought in originally, the 100 foot of topsoil, that's why they keep spraying that with water perpetually till the end of time. They need a perpetual motion machine. That's really only the only perpetual motion machine you will ever see on this planet. Besides war, is these buildings polluting the environment on a on a scale that we still can't wrap our mind around. Because a single gram of cesium, or I'm sorry, strontium, for instance, will release more atomic radioactive material than all the grains of sands and all the beaches on the planet. So what's hundreds of thousands of tons of uranium, which is enriched, right? Being enriched makes it a completely different monster. And it's a monster. All Everything we're talking about here is monstrous. And because Japan is trying to kill us now, everybody on the planet, because they brought in the State Secrecy Act, because they have blocked the internet, because they, there's one one thousand of people in Japan of one percent are on the internet, and so they've been muzzling Japan real hardcore for quite a while. But now the state secrecy law, and that was implemented by shoving a rag in a guy's mouth and dragging him out of parliament, right? So those those people are murderers. I'll come over and say hi to a few people. Let me see if my other uh, computer finally got it together. Uh, I'll spend a couple of minutes here. So anyone say hi, time to speak up. Because I'll go back down that road in a moment. Just passing through, lead plates, surfing. Yeah, <laughs> lead surfing boards. Unfortunately, still won't work. Line run the rail. It says, Hanson, could you elaborate on that smoke, please? I have to look up that one. Baby Mama, Fukushima Diary says, atmospheric doses. Seaside of Fukushima plant is increasing due to the rising contaminated groundwater. That's right, the groundwater is coming up. So that whole place has been liquefaction for quite a while because you spray water on everything on top of that. And thick smoke in Joplin? I got no idea, Steve. Uh, I can't really look it up right now. So what is the deal with the stoppage of the monitoring yeah, and Canada, remember last year, Canadian scientists, not last year, but this year, Canadian scientists here in Vancouver marched down the road because they felt they were being intimidated and threatened by the government. And they were wondering why the government was repressing them from um, talking about peer review studies that they're doing and stuff like that because that was, uh, up to that point, it was normal. So the government is pre cracking down here in Canada on the scientists and the monitoring stations all the way through Alaska and down through California, the fundings have been cut. And a lot of the people who work in these places are concerned, but they're not, they're only, they're only looking for a few basic elements of uh, these isotopes. And so right off the bat, you're, that's a bit of a problem because they're not looking for all, and you can't. It's impossible because they won't tell you what's in that combination, see? There's so many isotopes out there uh, that there's around 1,300 weaponized ones. And these are not short life ones, okay? At all. I know people want to try to muddle the water and say, oh yeah, but a lot of them are short life. That's an outrageous lie. There's around 3,000. The rest of them are the short life ones. The 1,300 weaponized ones that, and that we know about, there's probably around 5,000 5, to 10,000 isotopes we don't even know about. Remember, we only get to see obsolete technology, Okay. It's usually 35 years obsolete, but state secrets will stay state secrets. And they're not going to give the game away by saying, they already explored this avenue and I already explored those avenues, right? They'll just, uh, they'll just fess up to whatever any other country has already fessed up. And so we're not talking about what other countries have created. And it's not just about Fukushima, but that definitely changed the game. 
and the fact that they closed down the country. Uh, let me. I'm yelling. I'm sorry. Hi, Make. Hi, Boycott Japan. I mean, David. Hi, Robert. Does that mountain water run over the cores? Yes. Right? It's coming down the mountain. It's designed to do that. That's part of their old shit plan. If there's a meltdown. Is they need the ocean to come in or the river to come in. Now, the perfect solution was to build it on that slope. So the river runs underneath the plant. And it whisks out. And then right smack off the coastline is the Pacific Bar. And that dra that's the ocean current starts right there. And it drags it right across the Pacific to North America. But the rain clouds, the thousands of miles of rain clouds every day were picking that up. And bringing it over a lot quicker than that six-year model. But that six-year model is only based up on a week, two-week dispersal. It's not even based up on the three to four hundred tons a minute now every day that, that they spray in, but they can't retrieve, and that washes out under the plant. But that's the ge genetic makeup of all nuclear plants. Is that's their old shit plan, where they have a way of washing it away from the plant and out into a big river, and most of it is oceans. But they also, uh, the also ones on the oceans and the river all have an automatic system built into it to purge overspills and contaminants directly into the oceans and the rivers. And because even though the, you see the big chimneys there, that's the fable, right? I mean, they'll use it if they got to. Don't get me wrong. If there's a buildup of hydrogen gases from zirconium burning off in a dry pool, and that could happen uh, in all pools. All it takes is just a screw up. And you got to realize the equipment that they install in these places for a lot of these jobs. You can never get near that equipment again. You can never get in and replace valves or fittings or anything ever again because it's so toxic there. That's another thing a lot of people don't get. And that's why all the pools were done by computer controlled, automatically operated, totally self autonomous where they were watching it, you know, with their finger on the button, like they're doing my videos all the time, trying to edit me down, particularly if I want to talk about sensitive stuff, they can actually edit these clips before it streams back up. And there's quite a bit of discrepancy I've been noticing in my, the length of my videos. I'm going to be watching it a lot more closely and see. We know they do this anyway, where they can actually edit this stuff in real time when you're uploading it. Think about that one. So there's a lot of games that this uh, security agency is playing, but they're murdering people on a big scale this time. They're gone over evil this time. This is beyond creating 5 million orphans in Afghanistan, which is evil beyond imagination. Don't get me wrong. There's 121,000 contractors, Blackwater contractors in Afghanistan right now. They don't swear allegiance or oaths to anybody. They get paid in cash. There's a lot of evil on this planet, folks. That's all I'm saying. It's very real. And it's very consistent. Yeah, Kevin Blanche just posted another video. I just watched it before it came online, folks. 99 Slacker. 9999 was just saying there. Uh, he went down to um, Liver Livermore or Lost... I can't remember. One of the nuclear plants down there, I think it is. The, uh, Livermore Na Labs? Nabs. Livermore went down, went off on him. He's like he's an artist, so you got to give him, you got to give him some latitude because that's what he's all about. He's about projections. I'm burping as I'm talking. Pauses. Query. There was a pause there. Okay, no biggie. I'll check it after. A very large correction is on its way, Mister Urban Green. Correction? What does that mean? Uh, America is fucked if there is a big flare or EMP. That you, your prop? You come up with that all on your own? You've been studying up on me on the sly. Like, there's a lot of things that can happen. You can cross the street. Every time you cross the street, a car can run you over. Right? Does that stop anybody from crossing streets? Well, I mean, we could have a... Uh, a meteorite named Fukushima coming right at us and going to smack into the planet and cause an EMP and put out all the power. Or aliens can come by and cause a EMP and put out all the power and all the nuclear plants will melt down. There's no doubt about it and chaos will follow. And yeah, so I mean, I get that part. 
but I'm the Pacific is is in a lot of trouble and can never be saved. Fukushima and Japan can't really be saved. Most of the planet can't be saved. And we still need to try. Unfortunately, the human species doesn't throw in the towel very quickly. And we know we need to learn how to eat healthy and be healthy and how to mitigate the cancers and the tumors uh, and the hideousness of some of this stuff of how you just can't escape it. And so you can't escape it by living on the Pacific Ocean because of the supercell storms that are coming. And like I was saying last night, where the clouds will light up because the lightning is coming out of the ocean to the clouds that are radioactive too. Because the clouds are made up of the ocean itself because it sucks up all that cesium, all that strontium, all that plutonium, all that massive, inconceivable... Um, powerful uranium. The uranium is, to me is so scary because there's so much of it. There's so much on that plant. Because um, uranium, the way it works on a human body is just, oh. And the way that when you put salt water on these reactors, how they create these little nuclear engines at the atomic level, and we got no idea. We truly don't know. What, what the results of that thing is going to be. These are little nuclear engines coming out. I mean, they're all little nuclear engines. That's what an isotope and, and the radiation that it creates constantly, its byproducts, is. They're their own little nuclear engines. Uranium has got an engine for a couple of million, a billion years at least. And every reactor got massive amounts of the uranium in it and just little bits of the other stuff in it. But uranium, but MOX fuel is the is one of those rare ones where they figured out a way, and the plutonium that they're using in the MOX fuel is made from all the weapon heads, all the warheads, the nuclear warheads, and they have uh, right, they have reduced that down to the point where something that should weigh a gram weighs many pounds, and it's so scary and. They're, they're, all they were doing down there was weaponizing it even more, see? To the point of uh, we can't even wrap our minds around it. But once again, before coming back over to the comment section, remember that a gram of the strontium, and there's hundreds of thousands of tons of it missing that have atomized, a gram of it produces more radioactive atoms than all the grains of sand on the beaches. And so divide a gram into uh, a couple of hundred tons and then divide a gram of plutonium into a couple of hundred tons, and then divide, and then all the grains of sands and all the beaches on the planet each time per gram, divide it into a couple of hundred tons. And so you can see how many radioactive atoms there's a possibility for. And the fact that there are 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures at the bottom of these bowels of hills, and just because it's underwater don't mean it's not... It's not just as damaging. See, that's why, we're, that's why we figured they're on the site, they're able to stay on that site, is only because it finally got down under the water. It done all that damage for the first while, right? It cannibalized all the rods and all the structures of the buildings. And I'll come back over to the comment section. Yeah, comets create solar flares, and we're not worried about solar flares because... Uh, we can't do nothing about that. And that might happen one day. First, we've got to deal with the big one. Uh, solar flare's got nothing to do with what we're talking about today, right? You know, you guys coming in and bringing up those su subjects, uh, I don't think that's right. Because we're, we're trying to deal with a real issue. And if you want to come in and say that Planet X or Planet W or Planet Y can come the fuck in and make it even worse, I don't care, okay? I don't give a fuck about that shit. This is fucking real, boy. This is murdering people every friggin' day. The homeless, the victims down there, they need our attention. We don't need to go speculate about other fucking planets coming in and whacking into this place. Or comets coming by and knocking out the fucking power. The fuck is wrong with you? Huh? You got any idea what this is all about?
Do you think this is a joke? That we're here every night for something to fucking do? Get your fucking head out of your ass, boy. Planet X, shut the fuck up. I don't give a fuck about that. Piss me off. You got any idea how many people die today because of your shit like that distracting people? All you people running around talking about, Ah, oh, solar flare's gonna come back! We're talking about a dead ocean with every species in the dead. Every friggin' species, boy! Every species. We're talking about people that just lost every house in the country. Every friggin' house. And you want to come here and talk about Planet X? You want to come here and talk about fucking comets and ISON? That's no threat to us. Yeah, they might be one day. There's a real comet here. It's called Fukushima. And it's murdering us. It's going to murder most of this friggin' planet. I'm not yelling at you, I'm yelling at you. Fucking come in and say shit like that. I don't know what the hell is wrong with people. What kind of planet do you live on? Why are you on this stream? If you got that shit in your head, why are you here? I don't want people like you on this stream. I want people that actually got a mind can think. You're coming in repeatedly with this Planet X, with this Ison and, and these solar flares. Our history doesn't have that one, only once in Montreal. But yet, you're going to come in here all the time. We need pressure. Smart people thinking how to solve that problem. We'll worry about that problem in a couple of thousand years. If we got to worry about it. It's not. There's, there, that's the problem, you know. It's not that. You can go down that fable every day of the week. Go out and look up UFOs. There's videos every day. You can spend every day for the rest of your life looking for that. And you'll never find it. People do it all the time. You can pray to Jesus for 5,000 years to come solve your problems. And he didn't do nothing. The only thing that ever got solved was stuff you solved yourself. I'm not mad. I'm not screaming. I'm not yelling. That's a fable. You didn't hear that. You gotta filter out 1300 weaponized isotopes. Right? We can't even filter out one. Because we haven't got 4200 peer review academic studies on this every day. We need 4200 peer review scientific journals produced, published every day, flipped over the deal with Fukushima. The Pacific Ocean, the coastlines, the economics, the monetary, the food, the distributions, the resettlements of countries, all along the coastline of the Pacific over the next few years, before massive typhoons at three and four hundred miles an hour come through and destroy. They're only going to get bigger and meaner and nastier. Solar flares, I know, cause earthquakes. Yeah, you can put all your predictions on that all day long, okay? It has something to do with it, but it's not the issue. That's, you're just like speculating on something that you still don't know 100% or anything about it. We know 100% the ocean is dead. It's friggin' dead. Till the end of time. Hi, Freelance. Hi, Query. Yeah, Geiger counters, we need 1,300. Hi, Miss Milky. Jan. Just passing through, says, Dana, do you think the self-style elite have pulled a eugenics trigger with Fukushima? The Rockefellers, the Rothschild, Queen Elizabeth, Queen Beatrice, Prince Philip, in his diary, on the last page says, if you can 
when he dies after such a thing as reincarnation, he wanted to come back as a virus and kill 95% of the useless feeders on the planet. That's how arrogant these people are. And these people are all in their 90s, late 90s. They're all dying. And they're just going to take it with them, yeah. Wouldn't be surprised at all if they'd done it. Not that it matters, man. We got we got to worry, unfortunately, 100,000% about how to fix this. How to, or how to deal with it. Or how to survive it. Or how to build an ark for the Pacific Ocean species that are coming extinct now. And people want to make excuses all the time. And want to do things without context. And say things without context. As a distraction. It's frightening. I don't, you know. You got to, you got to learn in a very simple way that this truly is a big rock that's going to smack us. It's already here. It already smacked us. It already created all this damage. It's time for us to uh, crawl out of our caves and deal with it. It's time to grow up. It's time to put apart our bigotry and our racism and our hate and our divides forever. It's time to come together as a civilization instead of yelling at each other about solar flares and fucking planet X's. I know how sun flares deal with Earth. I know how sun flares are terrified they're going to destroy the satellites and the solar grids and all that. And that's not part of my equation, okay? Sun flares not going to do anything to the Pacific Ocean. Yes, it's going to knock out the power and all that shit. So will an ice storm. So will 500 mile an hour typhoons. I mean, do you think they got any power down there in the Philippines right now? Do you? They didn't need no fucking solar flare to knock the power out down there. Sorry, I don't mean to swear, folks. I go off my head sometimes, too. One third of the ocean will die. They're all fucking die, boy. Every one of them. So are all your lakes and all your rivers. So are the microscopic biodiversity in the habitat. If the GMO don't get them, Fukushima will. Not to mention what they've done in Iraq and Afghanistan. Millions and millions and millions and millions. It was 5.5 million rounds a month, dirty bombs a month, fired all over that country. Right, that's the number. A month. Dr. Doug Rourke, he was talking about a little couple of days' work down there in Kuwait. A million rounds of depleted uranium, 30 millimeters, from the A-10 Warthogs. The A-10 Warthog shoots nothing but depleted uranium. And uh, it shoots a ton and a half a minute. That's 71 Nagasaki bombs worth of radiation a minute. Released into the environment, see? Then you have Hanford, then you have off San Francisco. Did you... Like I was reading that article about all the sea lions breaking out and all the sores and all that, and they were trying to blame it on chicken pox. I talked about this a while back. That's uh, uranium, see? That's the yellow cake they dumped off there. That's what yellow cake does to you. It makes you break out in sores right away when you're contaminated. And they dumped 45,000 45 gallon drums right off San Francisco, 30 miles, not, uh, 30 miles off the coastline in that sanctuary where all the sea lions and seals hang out. And then they're like, oh, why are all the sea lions and seals so sick for? It must be chicken box. I wanted to go down and throttle that guy who said that and the media that reported it. That really got under my skin, I tell you what. I sent him an email. That's how, how upset I got about that. He didn't answer it. Um, screaming demon. Fifty percent of the oxygen is made in the ocean. The rest of it is made by uh, plants. And the GMO and radiation destroys the plants, it destroys their um, abilities to function. I'm not sure how that. I know that uh, the rainstorms that are going to be picking up the the radiation off the Pacific uh, is going to destroy most of the coastline if the three and four and five and six hundred mile an hour typhoons don't rip. All the vegetation out of there anyway. I mean, what they got done to that ocean is... 
Miss Mulkey is having a sad. Uh, not sure what to say. You gotta keep the good fight, honey. What do you mean, my dear? There's a natural correction coming. A junkyard. Truth is, they have killed an ocean. Everything else is next. It will just take more time. This is not a master. Well, this could be a master plan where the species that survives are able to survive in a radiated environment, and then they'll be good candidates to go to other planets. Because that's the only way we're ever going to get to other planets. Because most likely we're going to have to deal with high radiation when we get there. And so that wouldn't surprise me. That very well. And that's how they work. They think hundreds of years in advance. And so they probably worked out. There's 4,200 peer review academic studies locked up every day. And so there could be many cures for cancer. We, right, for radiation types cancers that we have no idea about. They don't tell us nothing. They hide it all away. 4,200 peer review academic journals or every day that are published are locked away uh, in the big ivory towers that we paid for, that our children produce, 1.6 billion hours a year. 1.6 million academic journals a year are locked away. Well, Bill Reed says we're all going to die. And if you drink dandelion root tea, you get every mineral and every nutrition in your body. And just that alone, just eating dandelion, or just like the roots, the flowers, and, and, and the greens, any of it is totally perfect. It's benign, but extraordinarily vital. And because the GMO, that's 80 to 90% of every corner shop and every supermarket, has no nutrients in it. And it has carcinogens engineered into it to kill the insects, but it's in the very DNA and you can't wash it off. Not that you can wash that stuff off even when it's sprayed on in applications, but it's into the DNA. And it has no nutrigen, it has no magnesium, it has no potassium, it has no iron, no cobalt, it has no calcium. It's actually engineered out, seen that in the peer review studies. And so you're susceptible, right? And so there's turmeric, there's ginger roots, there's DCA, uh, which you can get at health shops. And I know some people said they can't find it. Well, they didn't look hard enough because you can get it in any health shop. Everybody knows what it is. And so if you try, you will actually get it. And that reduced all tumors, all tumors, liver, lung, pancreas, pituitary, pituitary glands, brain, uh, breast, prostates, cancers by 70% in, in three weeks. It actually cures cancer. And it only costs a penny. There's no patent. You can buy it. It's easy to use, like a spoonful in your water and have a drink. It's benign. You won't even know you're drinking it in your water. And who cares if it's bitter? And some people say, oh, dandelion's bitter. Well, you never ate sweet and sour. You never ate bitter candy. You never ate this. You never ate that. That's all GMO. That's all aspartame, which is just poop from bacteria that's created, modified. And so these creatures, then you live in a saturated environment anyway, of radio waves, where if radio waves were colors, we couldn't see each other in a room or on the street. You wouldn't be able to, you'd be banging in everything all day because you couldn't see. Because it's all the colors of the different radio waves and satellite waves and telephones and different telephones and different bandwidths and emergency bandwidths. And then, you know, all the, all the government's bandwidths and then all the other countries' bandwidths and then all the low bandwidth. Uh, like your your Wi-Fi's and which are not really low, and then you got smart meters on your house. That if you took uh, seeds and put them alongside of a of a router, they won't even germinate. That's how radiation uh, from these devices work. And that if you read the manual, it says keep at least a quarter inch away from your head, the cell phones, so you can't zoom later by saying the phone when it comes out. And it has many times that phone phones will give you cancer. Uh, there's quite a few studies where people kept the phones in certain pockets for a number of years, and uh, it, the doctor asked him about their phones. He said, yeah, we always keep the phone right there, and that's right where the tumors were. And he's seen it show up so many times because he kept doing that, and then he was able to correlate how the relationship was with just that radio uh, wave, that single 
So you live you live in a toxic world with 65,000 unregulated chemicals. Our Canadian government uh, endangered all of Canada by using the EPA standards and by not uh, classifying the carcinogens as carcinogens by just saying, oh yeah, well, the EPA grandfathered them all in, right? Our Canadian government has put us all in jeopardy by not allowing us to have labeling on our GMO products and not even telling us it's here and then, then, then feeding us GMO pharmaceuticals and GMO baby foods and GMO pet foods. Our governments have turned their backs on us. They are, they are stabbing us to death with this stuff. And now we have to deal with a radiated planet where we're going to have three and four, like another planet. It's going to be like a, like a completely different planet in a few years with these supercell storms that are going to reach far into Canada, that are going to reach far in the United States, that are going to wreck the Philippines. I'm sorry, that's right, it's already gone. It's going to wreck Vietnam, it's going to wreck Alaska and make it uninhabitable till the end of time where mm -hmm. rainforests... Where the four, we have forest fires out here in the future. It's going to liberate all those isotopes. Right, right now they want to knock down all the trees in Japan because they're terrified of another, of a, uh, a forest fire. It will liberate those massive amounts of, of highly contaminated particulates back into their communities. At, see, that kind of falling, uh, nuclear fallout, people drop dead in the streets. It, it's, it's insidious what kind of system is they're trying to make a dollar and keep their jobs. It's insidious that people want to go off into fantasy land rather than put their heads together and deal with this like a civilization. Because we're not even a civilization if we can't come together and deal with a, you know, a extinction level event. That's what this is. This is an extinction level event. And if we're lucky, 5% of the species, not mentioning the humans, will survive this. Because no one will get it under, try to get it under control. We don't have the opportunity. We have state secrecy laws that are so powerful with a gag people, with a gag, with a rag, in parliament. And I mean, that's murder. That's murder. By stopping the freedom the, the flow of information and facts. And that's how, how else are you going to hold anybody accountable? I mean, we truly got to go down and capture Japan. Just blow up everything ahead of us and then go and do the job. That seems to be the only option left. If they're going to do that, we might have to sacrifice Japan, knock them off the map, period, and then go in and, and deal with Fukushima for the next thousand years ourselves. But we're, they're not going to be able to just lock everything away and put it under a cover like they're doing at Fukushima and say, oh, it's okay, see, pretty pretty pictures, pretty buildings, go back to sleep. So they can make a check. And then the victims that are working on that site. Something else. Right, the pollen liberates it back. Thanks, Miss Milky. Into the environment also. Yeah, see you, Janet. Hour and eight minutes. I'm sorry, folks. I'll give it up. That's a long time. I didn't see it. Okay, I'll come down and say hi to everybody. Mr. Urban Green. Miss Milky. Jan Brooks is Miss Milky, folks. Info Power. Hi, Dominic. Hi, Janet. Carol B. Bubba, Curtsy K, Baby Mama, David. I'll catch up on the comments after. Uh, Camshaft, Planet X, Robert. Jan, of course, which is Miss Milky. Just passing through, Dominic, I say already. Let me come down. Rad Chick, uh, Junkyard Flyer. 99 Slacker, bum bum bum, Query, Bubba, Linarel, Nukeborn, Time for a Stiff Drink, Stormy Clouds, hi, D Canterbury, 
Uh, really liked your comments last night, folks. You're very generous. It's okay to be rough on me once in a while. Cold tea, if you want. I don't care. I'm not hard to get along with. Bill Reed, David MacArthur, AV8, Nav. Um, yeah, I eat Danny Lyons raw too. Danny Lyons wine is awesome. That's probably the best wine out there, Danny Lyons wine, period. It's so easy to make too. I like there's a. Hi, Mickey. Mickey Smith. I'll catch your comments after, folks. Freelance Ryan. Dunce Campbell. Dave Campbell, was it? Europrop. Ran away at night. A little early. Uh, Robert. Yeah, the mountain water is running over the quarry and route to the Pacific Ocean, Robert. Hi, Make. Make is looking. I'll just finish up. Say hi, everybody. Newber Magic, of course. Lisa. Ricky. Cucumber. Nuts for B. I lost it. That's pretty good. Yeah, you're welcome, Freelance. You're welcome, everybody. I'm looking forward to reading your comments after. Apologize for screaming, going off. I guess it built up inside of me or something. You'll never know, I suppose. We'll see you tomorrow night. Again. Coming out swinging tomorrow night. Right away. Because that's how I roll, roll, roll. See? Hi, Laurie. Thank you, John. Robert. Albert. Jerry. Query, see, you guys all rhyme tonight. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I love it. That was pretty cool. Take care, folks. We'll see you tomorrow night.